guys! It's Victini Gamer here, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Say, where instead of playing the game, I actually talk about it. So, as you can probably see in front of your screen, I am going to be doing something a little bit different. And by a little bit different, I mean a lot different. We're going to be making a tier list. Yeah. <laughs> and you already saw the title of the video. Yes, we're going to be ranking every single shield character. Yes, so there's only eight shield characters in the game. Xing Chou doesn't count, by the way, since it is just swords and not a shield. So he doesn't count. But so far in Genshin, there are only eight shield characters in the game as of 4.1. So, yeah. Um, of course, I am going to be judging these characters based off of availability. So, for four stars, I'm going to be judging them if they are C6. And by five stars, I'm going to be judging them as if they are C0. So, yeah, that's just going to be the standard ranking protocol um, for these characters. So... Without any further ado, let's just hop in and let's just get this started. So, um, before we get this started, I am going to be putting up a disclaimer. The info is going to be coming from Honey Impact, so I'm going to be using that instead of the game. I already own every single character um, in this uh, tier list, by the way. Uh, just a heads up. So I do know how these shield characters work. So, yeah. And also, this is just my opinion. Again, this is just a silly opinion that I'm making. Everyone has their own opinions in um, tier lists, so if you are not satisfied, well, make your own tier list. So yeah. Um, well, anyways, without further, uh, without any further ado, let's just get on with it. So, at number eight, the number eight shielder in the game is sadly Noel. Yes, Noel. Um, she is a weird one, Noel. Um. I'm going to be transitioning to Honey Impact. There we go. So, Noelle. Um, Noelle is okay. <laughs> and by okay, I mean she's not that bad. Um, her elemental skill, which is her breastplate, which is just her um, shield, you basically get 150% um, absorption on elements and physical damage, which is pretty nice. Because, um, well, it's a shield. Shields are supposed to protect you. And also... If Noelle is on the field and she does a normal or charge attack, she can regenerate HP for every character. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, she can basically heal her party members as well. Same with her um, elemental burst. Her elemental burst is just a DPS burst, so it's not really a uh, good um, way to use her. But um, it, it, it does do damage, and because of Breastplate, it can basically heal your party members, which is pretty nice. Her also, her passive talents are pretty good too, because this just basically decreases the cooldown. And then this basically just um, gives you more uh, absorption on her shield. There's just one problem though, that makes her 8. The cooldown sucks. <clears throat> the cooldown sucks! It's 24 seconds for a 12 second shield. Yeah. And this kind of helps, I guess. But you have to do four normal or charge attacks to decrease the cooldown. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> so, yeah, the best that you could probably get with this is probably like around like 13 seconds or 15 seconds of cooldown. If you do use on field Noel. But. She'll be off-field as a support. So this does not fit her at all. <laughs> so yeah, um, the shield isn't really that good. Her C1 also um, is a support skill, where she basically just um, gives you more healing. But again, shields are supposed to be off-field supports. Noelle is not an off-field support. She is mainly tied to a DPS role. Yeah, she is a DPS shield character. She's not even a sub DPS because, well, she can't damage when she's off field. She has to be on field to do her damage anyway. So yeah, Noel, um, not really that great compared to the other um, characters on the list. And speaking of that, we're just going to be transitioning to that right now. So here we go. So there is Noel. She's number eight. Um, as you could probably already tell, 
the next few characters are going to be doing better jobs than Noelle. So yeah. At number 7, we have Xingyan. Yes, Xingyan herself. Um, not really a well-used character, and not really a character everyone uses in general. So, yeah, she is basically kind of a black sheep, um, in a sort of way. Because no one uses, uh, Xingyan, not that I could remember. But, yeah, uh, Xingyan, um, she's not that bad, I guess. But, um... The only reason why she's better than Noelle is because she's a sub-DPS. Yes, she could be a sub-DPS um, in the game. So, um, her elemental skill, which is this. So, it depends on how many opponents you hit. If you hit 1 or 0, you just get a level 1 shield. If you hit 2, you get a level 2. And if you hit 3, you get a level 3, which is pretty nice. So, it also does AoE pyro damage too. To nearby players so think of it as uh well toma <laughs> which i will get to him soon um just think of it as toma's elemental skill where it basically just deals pyro damage but it depends on how many um enemies you hit which sucks because if you want to increase the range of your elemental skill you have to hit a lot of opponents and well on 1v1 fights or you have to fight bosses this does not proc you will always get a level 1 shield, which sucks. <laughs> but at least it could do damage, unlike Noelle. So she has that going for her. She also scales off a of defense, so the more defense you have, the higher your shield is as well. Um, it's the same thing as Noelle, by the way, where you need uh, high defense to get um, shields. But some characters um, later on in the list require you to have high HP. So keep that in mind. These are just um, the two characters as of now that uh, have shields based off of their defense. So um, with this, she basically gets um, level 2 and um, level 3 by reducing the requirement, which is pretty nice. It means that you could basically get um, her uh, shield levels pretty easily by reducing the uh, requirements. So... You could get a level 2 by just hitting one opponent, which is pretty nice. And then you can get a level 3 by hitting two, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, pretty nice. Also, if you are shielded, you get physical damage bonus, which is pretty nice. Eula would greatly appreciate this. But then again, um, this is mainly tied to Shenyan herself. So, yeah, um, this is mainly if you want to be running a main DPS Shenyan. Um, her, uh, pat her constellations are not that bad either. So when she, uh, uses Sweeper for her swing, we ba basically, it basically, um, decreases the physical resistance of enemies by 15%. I don't know why I stuttered there, but yeah. Um, you also have her C2, which is pretty nice as well, which basically... Um, has physical damage and crit rate increased by 100% and will form a shield at level 3 when cast, which is pretty nice. So, her Q, I think that's Rift's Revolution? Yeah, her Q. Her Q has a 100% crit rate and physical damage increase and also gets a level 3 shield, which is pretty nice. It means that you can get her shield instantly, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then, well, I already talked about her C4, which basically just makes her a um, support, which is pretty nice. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, she is a physical damage uh, support, but then again, you could just run any other shield. Um, she's only mainly used for uh, pyro application, but there's already another character or shield in the game that does a better job than her. So yeah, um, Xingyan doesn't look that well. It doesn't really look really that good anyway um, compared to the other characters. So... This is the point of the list where there is a huge, massive power gap on shields. So yeah, um, you thought Noelle and uh, Shenyan was good? Well, these next few characters will put them to shame. So, at number 6, we have Toma himself. Uh, if I could find Toma, there he is. We have Toma himself, who is a extremely, and I mean... An extremely good 
Pyro support. So, what does Toma do? He has an E and a Q that gives off shield. Yeah, it is really good. His E basically has damage absorption, which is pretty nice. It also scales off on max HP, which is also pretty good too. So yeah, this is an extremely, extremely good shield. And also, he deals pyro damage on, her, um, on his elemental skill, which is pretty nice. Also, his Q is basically functionally the same thing as his E, where instead of actually doing nothing, it actually applies pyro damage, which is pretty nice. It means that he works well on Vaporize, Melt, Bergen, whatever you desire, he basically does the job for you. So yeah, his E and his Q are basically similar, except that his Q just does damage while his E does not. So yeah, um, pretty nice. Also, it scales off of his max HP. So the more HP you have, um, the higher uh, damage absorption the shield has, which is pretty, pretty nice. It is extremely, extremely broken. <laughs> so, so good. Yeah. Um, and since he has max HP, he won't die easily, which is pretty nice. Also, his passive talents are pretty good too. So you basically can deal a lot of damage on his Q based on his max HP, which is pretty nice. It means that he could uh, sub DPS um, pretty, pretty well um, in the game. Also, his other passive talent basically just gives him more shield strength, which is pretty nice. So yeah, um, as you can see there, Toma looks way better than Noel and Shenyan right now. So yeah, um, doesn't really look that good. Also, his constellations are pretty good too. This just decreases the cooldown on his barriers. This just um, gives him energy. And this just gives him more damage on party members, which is nice. 15%, by the way. 15% on normal charge and plunging attacks when his blazing barrier is obtained or refreshed. That is, that is busted. This just makes him, like... One of the best pyro supports in the game, or one of the best shielders in the game. Yeah, it, he's just good. He's actually good. <laughs> so yeah, there's Toma. Um, a really big power gap um, compared to Shenyan and Noel, as you see there. So yeah, there is Toma. Now, um, the next character is probably close to Toma in terms of um, support capabilities. So next up... We have the sleeping girl herself, Layla. Yeah, Layla. So, Layla functions similarly to Toma, except that her Q um, is not a shield. It is just a uh, burst uh, damage um, thing. Uh, let me transition to Honey Impact. There we go. Yeah, so Layla, um, her E actually does damage, which is pretty nice. <laughs> it means that uh, she can basically gain her Knight Crystals, and then you basically deal um, Cryo damage, which is pretty nice. So her E is also based off her max HP. Again, more max HP the better, meaning that she can't die, <laughs> which is pretty nice. So yeah, it is, it is a shield that does damage, which is pretty, pretty nice. It's so good. <laughs> and also, um, her E unlike Toma's, can actually do damage. Instead of Toma's, well, have to be tied to his Q, this basically is tied to her E, which is nice. And also, no shield downtime. Yeah, no shield downtime. You literally just use her E, and then you can use it again and again and again and again and again. It's infinite. It's infinite. Yeah, pretty nice. <laughs> and her Q is nothing to scoff at either. You basically just deal AoE cryo damage, which is pretty nice. So, yeah. And her passive talents are also pretty good, too. So, her shields and from her shooting stars basically just uh, give more damage based off her max HP, which is pretty nice. Means that she will be a great sub DPS. Also, her passive talents are pretty nice, too. You basically get increased shield strength, and you get a max of four stacks of that, which is nice. It means that you could basically not die and take more damage, which is pretty cool. And her constellations are all about her shield, basically. So yeah, as you can see here, this basically generates shields for party members and also increases, um, or also increases 20% uh, of um, the shield absorption, which is pretty nice as well. 
and also you absorb more um, cryo damage as well, which is pretty nice. This just gives one energy, which is pretty cool too. This basically gives party members normal charge attacks um, increased by Layla's max HP. So the more max HP you have, the higher your damage will be, which is nice. This is so, so good. Super, super, super good um, constellations. If you want Layla to be one of the best supports in the game, get her at C4. And her C6 is nothing to scoff at either. Basically just increasing the damage on her stars and also... Um, Decreasing the uh, interval by 20%, meaning that you deal more crowd damage, which is pretty nice. So yeah, Layla, definitely way better than Toma in terms of support, because her support is based off her max HP instead of Toma's flat 15. So basically, you can just increase it up to the maximum level, probably around like 30% if you build your Layla with nothing but max HP. So yeah, Layla looks really good, super, super good. Um, not a sleeper for sure. Alright, now next up, we have a character who is basically like Layla, but more, well, in terms of teams, better because her teams are really, really good. Next up, we got the cat girl, Kirara. <laughs> if I could find Kirara. Uh, crap. <laughs> There she is. There's Kirara. There's Kirara. Okay, there we go. So, Kirara! Um, she is prob- Yeah, she's actually one of the newest, um, shielders in the game. I think so. Because before- I- I'm pretty sure it's Kirara, because I think Baishu came out before Kirara? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she came out before Kirara came out. So, yeah. Uh, well, anyways- here is Kirara in the flesh. So, Kirara. Um, her elemental skill is actually pretty good. As you can see there, her cooldown is pretty nice. So, her shield duration is 12 seconds. But if you use her E, without holding it, by the way, you get 8 seconds. 8 seconds! This has no downtime. No downtime. This is a no downtime shield. Super, super good. <laughs> and as you can see here... You basically get dendral damage, which is pretty nice as well. This is just way too good. And also you get 250% shield absorption. And she scales off on max HP, so the more max HP you have, the higher her damage absorption, meaning that you can't die. You just cannot die. Also her Q is pretty good too. It's a pretty quick burst, basically just applying dendral to a lot of uh, characters. Just think of it as um, Klee's... Um, e, her Jumpty Dumpty, where she basically plants bombs around the floor. So yeah, um, that's basically it for uh, Kirara um, on her elemental skill and burst. Kirara's passive talents are extremely good too, as you can see here. Basically just increasing the damage absorption on her E, which is pretty nice as well. Also, the damage she can deal um, is pretty nice too, meaning that she could become a sub-DPS if she wants to. And her constellations are nothing to scoff at either. It's extremely good. So this basically just gives damage absorption, which is pretty nice. This just basically gives her one extra uh, cat grass, which is pretty nice as well. Her C4 is her best constellation in the game. No questions asked. As you can see here, basically you get um, a mental burst damage, which is nice. It means that she is a sub DPS if you do have her at C4. It's just so good. <laughs> it's just really, really good. Um, yeah, so when you do normal charge and plunges, you basically just get uh, small cat grasses, and it does 200% of her attack as um, damage. So you basically uh, could do a normal attack, and then it basically this procs, and then you trigger a dendro reaction, which is nice. And C6 is nothing to scoff at either. So you get a flat 12% elemental damage bonus, for 50 seconds after Kirara uses her skill or burst. Remember, her skill cooldown is 8. Yeah, this um, this is good. <laughs> this is good. You get this permanently if you have her at C6. This is a flat 12% boost. And not only that, you get more shield absorption. And you get uh, sub-DPS support thanks to the C4. Yeah, Kirara good. 
Kirava is way too good. <laughs> yeah, um, she beats out Layla just a little bit because of Dendro teams. Dendro teams are way too good. It's basically the meta at this point. Um, Nahida runs rampant, and Kirara is also pretty good since she is a Dendro character herself. Yeah, Dendro team, way too good. Just way too good. And, well, it's now to go on to the top three. Yes, the top three. So, you probably already know what the top three are, um, because they are literally one of the best supports in the entire game. Yeah, there's like literally no contest for these. Um, compared to these other um, five, these three are really, really busted. So, well, this is going to be a power gap, so here we go. At number three, we got Diona. Diona. <laughs> there's nothing more to be said. It's, it's Diona. It's just Diona. So, Diona. Oh boy. <laughs> so, when you hold her E, um, by the way, it has 15 seconds, but you still get a shield anyway. Also, when you tap her E, basically it has a shield as well. So it doesn't really matter um, how long it basically is. So, yeah. Um, for every pot you hit, you basically get a duration of whatever amount for whatever amount of seconds. So when you tap her E, you basically get two, which means that you get around five seconds of shield, which is pretty nice. I mean, you basically have a six second cooldown. But if you fire five right here, basically you get around 15 seconds. 15 seconds of elemental skill shield. This lasts forever, by the way. Yeah. And also you get 15... 75% damage absorption bonus. And she scales off a of max HP too. Yep. <laughs> Your typical skill off a of max HP characters. Yeah, it is so, so good. Yeah. Um, it's just so good. Her Q also heals and does cryo damage, which is nice. As you can see here, you, her movement speed or everyone's movement speed and their stamina does, um, consumption gets decreased if she has a shield up. Which is really, really good. Also, when um, enemies go into the AoE queue, their attack gets decreased by 15 seconds, meaning that her shield becomes really good. It means that no one could take damage. Especially if you have a max HP Diona. So, so good. Also, her constellations are probably one of the best in the game. <laughs> I'm talking about C6, but I will get to that soon. So, C1... You basically get 15 energy back on her Q. Nice. It means that she could spam it. Uh, C2, you get more damage absorption. <laughs> so good. And also you give it to teammates as well. So it's basically good for co-op. C, um, C4, you basically just uh, get reduced 60% on charge attacks. Not that great. But what's the real kicker is C6. So... When your HP falls below 30%, or falls below uh, 50%, or yeah, basically fall below 50%, you get a healing bonus of 30%, meaning that you just heal really fast, which is nice. But if your HP is above 50%, you get a flat 200 elemental mastery. A flat 200. This literally makes her the best 4-star shield in the entire game. This constellation right here. So... Not only she gives shields, not only does she heal, she gives a flat 200 elemental mastery. You know how good elemental mastery is now? It's so good. Because you get elemental reaction bonuses. So, on melt, she thrives. On freeze, she thrives too. It's just so, so good. She is extremely good. The best 4-star shield ever to date. No contest unless they release another four star shield but i doubt it <laughs> i doubt anyone could be as good as diona um in four star shielding so now we have the top two so the top two well um put the puzzle pieces together you probably already know who the number two and number one are but i will save those for later so number two we got the doctor himself Baiju. Yes, Baiju. <laughs> so, Baiju, um, I am going to be rating him as if he is C0. Again, I did say this before, I rate 5-star characters as, as if they are C0. 
So yeah. Well, Baishu. So, Baishu is extremely good. His E heals based off his max HP. Again, really good. His Q basically heals himself and he gets um, damage absorption on his Q. It means that he has a shield. And he heals based off of max HP. So his Q heals and it gives shields. It's, it's good. It's just so good. <laughs> it is extremely good. He is really good. And remember, he's a Dentro character. So he is basically featured in one of the best teams ever with Nahida. And he's ran constantly on Dendro teams. He is so good. He is literally one of the only Dendro healers in the entire game. And he does his job really well. It's so good. He's just so good. Yeah. You get damage absorption based off his max HP. You get healing based off his max HP. He does Dendro damage on his Q. His Q does everything. It's so good. Also... His passive talents are extremely good as well. So, when you're under 50% HP, you get 20% healing bonus, meaning that you heal faster. And also, if your HP is higher than 50%, you get dendral damage bonus, meaning that you just deal more dendral damage. Yeah, he's, he's just so good. He's extremely good. And his other passive talent, so for every 1000 max HP that you get, um, you will increase the damage of Bloom, Hyper Bloom, Bergen and Burning for 2%. And also you get um, increased damage bonus on Aggravate and Spread by 0.8%. This is so good. <laughs> yeah, every time you get healed, you get damage bonuses. Yeah, you can see why he's extremely good on his passive talents. You don't even need his constellations. His constellations are just cherries on top. Because his passive talent is just so good. Yeah, it's... He's like one of the best dungeon supports in the entire game. What, what can I say? He's, he shields, he heals, he gives support. Yeah, Baiju. He's just really good. <laughs> there is nothing more to be said. And well, you probably already know who the number one is, so I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Number one is obviously the Dendro Arc- but not the Dendro. The Geo Archon Zhongli. Yeah, who, who would have thought? would have thought that the best shielder in the game is number one so oh boy <laughs> so Zhang Li, he has the best shield in the entire game because he's just way too good at his job it's so so good so is E he basically summons a pillar and you get a shield if you do hold it by the way you basically deal geo damage you get damage absorption based off his max HP, and he has no cooldown. He has no cooldown. Also, when you use his E, you can decrease the elemental res and physical res of an opponent by 20%. 20%! Are you kidding me? 20%! He's good! <laughs> And also, he has the highest, and I mean, the highest uh, HP scaling ever. It means that his shield won't die. Also, his shield, it lasts for the longest in the entire game. 20 seconds. 20 second shield. This is the longest shield in the entire game. Yeah. And also, it's 12 seconds. A 12 second cooldown. 12 seconds! He gets this infinitely! You could literally slack off for 8 seconds and not put up his E. Yeah, it's so good. He is an extremely good shielder. One of the best in the game. His Q is also pretty good too. It petrifies them, meaning that they can't move. Meaning that you could just wail on them. It's pretty, pretty good. Works on small enemies, but it doesn't work on bosses, however. But it's still really, really good for mob fights. His passive talents are also pretty good, too. It's so, so good. So, when your shield takes damage, you get shield strength. You get shield strength! 25% shield strength! You get hit, you get 5% shield strength. So, if you hit, get hit 5 times, you get 25% shield strength. This means that his shield actually cannot die. It's so good. Also, oh boy, oh boy, his C... His passive talent, his level 2, his, his 
this just it's just this passive talent. So Zhongli bit kills off a max HP, right? So with that max HP, you get normal charge and punching attacks increased by 1.39 of his max HP. His whole damage gets increased by 1.9 of his max HP. And his Q gets increased by 33% of his max HP! He's good! He's the best shielder in the game! If you have really high HP, you get this off. It is so good. Extremely, extremely good. It... What can I say? I, I have no words. Zhang Li, the, the best shielder in the entire game! He, he puts everyone else to shame. Even Baishu. Yeah, um, yeah, th there's really nothing more to be said. Uh, Zhang Wei, best shielder in the entire game. So yeah, well, here's the tier list. Um, here is the tier list for the best shielders in the game. You can take a picture of it if you want. You could send it on social media. Um, but this is my opinion on the best shielders in the entire game as a whole. So yeah. Well, anyways, if you like this style of video, if you want to see me do more tier list videos in the future, be sure to leave a like in the video down below. Also, um, if you do uh, subscribe to my channel, that will be greatly appreciated as well. Um, subscribe if you do enjoy my content, because I upload once a week, and I also work really, really hard <laughs> on these videos, so the more amount of support, the better. And also, uh, yeah... Uh, speaking of, if you do subscribe, be sure to turn on the notification bell to not miss out on a single upload I do. I upload once a week. Again, I, I said it before. And if you do want to uh, not miss a single upload, make sure to turn on that notification bell so that you can get my latest uploads. Also, comment down below. What do you think of this list? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you want to change positions of certain characters? Do you think it's fine just the way it is? What is your opinion on the best shielders in the game? And also, how would you order them um, in general? Make sure to leave those in the comments down below. I want to see what you guys think who is the best shielder in the entire game. So, yeah. Well, anyways, thank you guys for watching this tier list video. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.